Some people are frightened of flying. Even though most have heard the statistics, cruising aloft in the Earth's lower atmosphere seems scarier to some than barreling down a highway in traffic at over 70 miles per hour. Here's one statistic. U.S. National Safety Council estimates that over a lifetime, you are approximately 75 times more likely to stay alive while flying than while driving. And another. Last year, there were over 35 million safe passenger flights in the world. That's about 95,000 flights per day. This slide shows the growth in aviation over the past half century. As you can see, it's pretty steep, and this is expected to continue. Of course, modern cars are, as a whole, a lot safer than older cars, and the same goes for modern aircraft. This is due in large part to advances in our engineering knowledge and to improvements in our tools and technologies. The technology on which I'd like to focus today is radio. This is not just the radio that you might think of as AM and FM broadcasts when you're listening in your car, not connected to your smartphone. But radio is the general technique for using electromagnetic signals, electromagnetic waves, for communication. And when it comes to aviation, using radios for navigation and surveillance as well. As you may know, radar, used for navigation and surveillance, stands for radio detection and ranging. We've come to take radio for granted. Our cell phones have within them several radios for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, telephone, and text. Likewise, our home wireless internet routers. The GPS receivers in our cell phones are radio receivers. And radios are, naturally, how we communicate with all our spacecraft, including the over 40-year-old 11 billion miles from Earth Voyager spacecraft, which are, as far as we know, the most distant from Earth human-made objects ever. For mobile platforms like ships and aircraft, radio is essential. The Titanic sinking made full-time shipboard use of radios mandatory. In the 1920s, the U.S. Post Office established radio systems for air-to-ground communication with their pilots. No GPS available for navigation back then, of course. Radios have been used for aviation ever since. In fact, this radio technology has been nearly continuously improving for approximately the past 100 years. Its very success has led to a significant modern challenge for radio, and that is interference. The more signals in the same space at the same time and within the same region of the frequency spectrum, the more difficult it is to extract any given signal of interest. The frequency spectrum, or frequency domain, is what we electrical engineers think of as a dual or counterpart to the time domain. In effect, we carve up the spectrum like real estate and assign parcels to different services. AM radio has its band, likewise FM, cellular, direct broadcast TV satellites, and so on. Continuing the analogy with real estate, the so-called fences between different frequency bands are achieved mostly by filters, and these filters are not perfect, especially when your spectrum neighbor signal is very strong compared to a weak signal you may be trying to receive from far away. This is actually part of the reason why we're asked not to use our cell phones when aircraft are taking off and landing. Even though the aviation signals are in a different frequency band, if several hundred cell phones very near the aircraft receiver, that is from passengers on board, simultaneously begin transmitting, the cumulative leakage into the aviation band might be significant. Well, we're working on improving this too. What we um, communications engineers think of this as is called the near-far problem. Even though people may be standing around you talking normally, if there are a dozen of them talking very near your ears, it will be quite difficult for you to hear them, someone else speaking from across the room. This slide shows uh, the US radio frequency spectrum, spectrum allocations, and it's very similar to uh, this in other countries worldwide. Lowest frequency is on the upper left, highest frequency on the lower right. The different colors here denote different services, some of which are listed. Clearly, this is complex, and this depiction doesn't even address the spatial domain of where transmissions occur, or the temporal or time domain of when transmissions occur. Communications engineers work within and manage this complexity in these three different domains of time, frequency, and space. 
The interference and near-far problem that I referred to happens more often today than in the past because there are so many more devices transmitting for so many different applications. Hence, a continuing challenge for us communications engineers is to make our transmissions more efficient, both spectrally efficient and energy efficient. Energy efficiency is what you might think. It means using no more energy than needed to get your transmission through reliably. An example benefit of improved energy efficiency would be longer battery life. Spectrum efficiency is a little more subtle. This actually measures how much information we get through a given amount of spectrum, a given spectral frequency band. We measure this in bits per second per unit spectrum. That's bits per second per hertz. Well, over the years, communications engineers have devised multiple ways to impress information onto an electromagnetic signal. This process is called modulation. A simple example is on-off signaling, where the presence of an electromagnetic wave for a given time period denotes a 1. The absence of an electromagnetic wave during that same period denotes a 0. This is a simple form of binary amplitude modulation. To improve spectral efficiency, we've been working on devising other techniques which vary not just amplitude, but frequency, phase, polarization, and other characteristics of electromagnetic signals. My team and others in the community <clears throat> have been working on these modulation and demodulation techniques and other communication techniques for some time for the aviation communication signals that go from air to ground, air to air, air to satellite. This includes developing models for the very channels over which signals travel from transmitter to receiver encountering losses, reflections, or echoes that can severely distort and interference. It includes so-called multi-carrier signals, where we pack several signals tightly together in the frequency spectrum, adjacent to one another, using newer, better filters. The use of several antennas that can work together to capture more signal energy to combat noise. Some fairly elaborate techniques where we actually estimate and then cancel interference at the receiver. The aviation community has been using conservative approaches for decades, and rightly so. As the number of aircraft in the sky continues to grow, and new types of aircraft, unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, also known as drones, enter the skies by the thousands, even more sophisticated radio techniques will be required. For aviation, safety is paramount. Hence, aviation communication systems must be extremely reliable and deliver messages with very low probability of error. Aviation communication systems must also have a high level of availability and be there when needed, 24-7, year-round. They must also have what we call a high level of integrity, so that, for example, when a pilot receives a message, she can be confident that's the true message from an authentic source in air traffic control. Finally, aviation communication systems must have extensive coverage so that signals can be received at the farthest reaches of aircraft flight paths. This slide shows aviation fatalities over the past century. They've gone down significantly thanks to well-established air traffic management procedures by the FAA and others and to continuous R&D, including that on radio. And remember, this has happened at the same time that the number of flights has grown dramatically. Some impressive engineering, I think. I've been working for NASA for about 10 years on these aviation radio problems, along with a succession of good students, other engineers from industry. And just as the cellular community rolls out new systems like LTE and 5G, we're developing new adaptive systems for aviation. New multiple antenna techniques that will improve availability even in the most extreme or worst case channel conditions we can find, which we do seek out for our tests. Aircraft must connect throughout their journey from their start on the airport surface to takeoff, cruising, landing, and taxiing to their destination at the airport gate. Airport surface communications are vital too because they help aircraft move efficiently through airports, which can be thought of as nodes or hubs of the complex and dynamic air traffic system. A communication system I helped work on several years ago called Aeromax is now being deployed and for over the next several years at thousands of airports worldwide to help carry some of these airport surface communications. My team and I are also looking at new relatively unused frequency bands in the so-called millimeter wave spectrum, as is 5G, for more reliable and secure airport surface communications. Optical communications are also on our list. 
aviation communication systems being developed today are being designed to unprecedented levels of reliability and availability. <clears throat> we have more engineers working on aviation communication networks than ever before from industry, NASA, universities. These new aviation communication networks will be diverse, for example, using multiple frequency bands. And then with that diversity comes reliability. They will be adaptive, even predictive, to make aviation safer and air traffic more efficient. This includes large efforts on integrating UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones into the national and the worldwide airspace. Oh, and yes, uh, <clears throat> passenger communications will be getter, getting better as well. So you can, if you like, connect reliably by radio while flying. So rest easy. Flying is very safe. And modern radio communication techniques will help make it safer than ever before, thanks to the R&D of NASA, universities, and others. Dollars well spent, I think, on science and engineering. Thanks. I should go catch a flight. <laughs>